Hi guys, I hope you're well and welcome to the next vlog. Now in this particular vlog, I want to discuss why you don't want to be going to absolute failure too frequently. So you're probably wondering what is failure? Failure is essentially where you cannot get any more repetitions with a given weight within a set without a spotter or without additional help. So you may think that to build muscle you need to be going to failure all the time. You need to be pushing the muscle to absolute exhaustion. So I'm going to tell you within this video why that's actually a bad idea and that can actually impede your strength and volume gains. And I'll explain why that's very important in a second. However, I just want to briefly touch on why I believe most people do this in gyms all around the country. And one of the biggest reasons for this is most people take a lot of their information, especially when they're trying to build muscle and lose fat from either the biggest guy in the gym or from people online who take anabolic steroids, people who are taking all sorts of drugs. And because of this, they can essentially train in a certain way where it doesn't particularly matter whether they go to absolute failure or not. Because they're taking drugs, not only are they going to be significantly stronger, not only are they going to be able to build muscle because it, steroids helps increase muscle protein synthesis, but in addition to that, anabolic steroids help with recovery as well. So in short, for a natural trainee taking a set to absolute failure, especially for your big compound exercises, mainly for your big compound exercises, things like squats, deadlifts, bench press, overhead press, or variations of these, it's very draining on the body. It takes a long time to recover from, especially something like a deadlift, a very big, heavy movement. And it's because of this that can actually impede your recovery and make it very difficult to make continued strength and volume gains if you're constantly going to absolute failure on these big compound exercises. Now the reason why that's very important is once again it's very important to realize that the the evidence is becoming more and more clear now that the key driving factor for influencing muscle growth is volume which is sets times reps times load. So in short it's the total amount of work and tonnage you're doing over a course of a session, over a course of a week and over a chronic period of time. And therefore, if you're training exercises, big compound exercises to failure all the time, again, that's going to impede your recovery, make it difficult to make continued strength and volume gains. So again, you're putting the cart before the horse because you're focusing on failure as opposed to what is the most important factor, which is increasing volume over time. And again, if you're taking every single set to failure, it's going to impede recovery, make it difficult to make those continued strength and volume gains. But more more acutely, this is really going to have an impact on the strength and the volume within this training session itself. So let me give you an example. Let's say you're bench pressing and you're doing 100 kilograms and you can do 100 kilograms for approximately a set of eight. If you can, if you take that first set to absolute failure when you cannot get any repetitions, for those of you watching this who've taken a set to failure, especially on a big compound lift, you know how much it takes out of you for the following sets. So the following set you may only get six repetitions, and then if you go to absolute failure on that one, and then the final set, you may only get four or five repetitions. Whereas if you didn't go to absolute failure on the first set, so let's say you get seven repetitions on that first set, and then the second set, you probably get seven repetitions again, holding one rep in the tank. And let's say, for example, you go to absolute failure on the final set and let's say you get six repetitions you've just taken one set to failure throughout these three working sets in the second example we've got a seven a seven a six which is 20 repetitions whereas within the first example we got eight six five or four so that would be a total of 19 or 18 repetitions within the first example and that's where the biggest problem occurs acutely you're actually getting less total work within the session itself because you're going to absolute failure on your first set you're getting less volume throughout the the working sets in addition to that it's going to be very difficult to recover from as quickly compared to the individual that just took the last set to fail within the weeks ahead so that's another big issue with training to failure now it's important to note that Training failure does have its benefits because you're recruiting all the muscle fibers. And because of that, it's worthwhile still having some failure included within your sessions, but in moderation. So for example, if your isolation exercises, things like bicep curls, lateral raises, tricep pushdowns, because he's using less weight, it's not, these aren't compound exercises, 
it doesn't take that much to recover from these exercises, that, therefore there's no reason why you can't take these exercises to absolute failure, and therefore you're recruiting all the muscle fibers within these exercises, you're getting the benefits of failure, but you're not having the issues with regards to recovery and also the accumulative fatigue across the working sets which can have an impact on volume. Whereas those big heavy compound exercises, things like squats, deadlifts, bench press, overhead press, you really want to try and avoid failure into the last set or you can even avoid failure altogether within those compound exercises because again, as long as volume is gradually increasing over time and you're consuming calorie surplus with, muscle, with sufficient protein, you will build muscle. Remember, volume is the main driving factor. Failure is not the main driving factor for influencing muscle growth. So hopefully this has been useful. Hopefully this has opened your eyes and making you realize one, train to failure too frequently can actually impede the volume within those working sets, but it can also impede recovery therefore making it difficult to make more strength and volume gains, which is just impeding our main goal, which is increasing volume over time. But in addition to that, there's no reason why you can't take your isolation exercise failure with every single set. And just realizing where is this information coming from? This is coming from the individuals that take drugs, they take anabolic steroids, and they can pretty much train to failure all the time. They've got so many benefits, Drugs are so powerful. One, increase muscle protein synthesis. Two, it's going to help improve your strength. Three, it's going to help improve recovery. There's so many factors, and that's just a small list there of how drugs will help improve not only your gym performance, but also strength and muscle mass. And because people are following information from those individuals who are taking drugs and applying it to themselves, who are natural, you just can't recover the same. You can't accumulate the same volume within those working sets and again it's going to impede strength and volume over time so hopefully this has been useful hopefully this will um, change your mind if you start applying this will make a huge difference to your strength and volume within the weeks ahead as soon as you try and really minimize training to absolute failure for those big compound exercises and make a big get big difference to your strength and volume gains going forward so thank you very much for watching if you're still yet to subscribe to the channel please do so miss a video and if you've enjoyed the video please like it thank you very much i'll speak to you soon